as Shannon's winding down, um, I'd like to re inter introduce Richard Johnson. Now, Rich is one of our local county people, as well as Shannon. They're, they're from St. Mary's County. We, we live in the Tri-County area, we call this, Southern Maryland. It's a combination of Charles, St. Mary's, and Calvary counties. And we've had a good working relationship over the years with all the counties in this region. This particular facility is the Isaac Walton, the Southern Maryland Isaac Walton League. And uh, they've done a great job of putting an outdoor conference center. I'm sure a lot of y'all, when you came back at the end of this road, you were wondering, where am I going? This is the middle of nowhere, going down the dirt road and saying, I'm lost, I know I am. And you come here and it's a beautiful farm facility. And to give you an idea what the Isaac Walton League does, they're dedicated to clean air and water, habitat for animals, uh, conservation. They're dedicated to working with people from hunting and fishing and the next generation as well. It's a wonderful conservation organization, and they really put their money where their mouth is. And this facility was earned literally over the years by working together, the members putting it together. They have uh, down below, if you take a trip down, they have the Zakaya Swamp, which is a very historic uh, area in, in, in Charles County, and it's a rural legacy area. They have uh, a, a boardwalk that goes through there. We've got to fix that. It's, uh, it's, it's going by the wayside. That some of the money from this event will go to the boardwalk. And we have a campground down below so people can stay over the weekend. So this event is, is, is free for people to come and stay over the weekend and really enjoy and learn a lot. Richard has a unique situation. He wanted to put up a wind generator. Now you wouldn't think a wind generator is a big deal. They've been putting them up in the, out in the Midwest and the West for years all over the place. In our county, believe it or not, we didn't have laws that would allow a wind generator to go up. So Richard came to the county commissioners, he said, this is ridiculous, and we said, absolutely, it is ridiculous. And so we changed the code within a reasonable time, I think within three or four months, maybe six months at the most. The code got changed and we moved on, and then he found out that the state of Maryland was, had all kinds of grief about putting up a wind generator where the wind blows best in the critical area around the water. So as a result, he's had to go through that. He's gotten through the hoops, but we hope his paving the way will make it easier for other people. So Richard, I'm going to turn it over to you. I'm Rich Johnson. I'm in the Valley of St. Mary's County. I'm going to turn it up a little bit. Speak loud, Richard. Can you hear me? One, two, three. There we go. Yeah, beat it. One, two, three. <laughs> How's that? That's real loud. Anyway, my situation is my wife has always made me do something. I'm a double E electrical engineer. I support the Pax River down here on the base. When I'm not testing aircraft, um, being told what to do with my wife, you know, she tells me what to do. <laughs> so uh, I live on the water, and our utility bill is about $5,000 a year. I've been tracking it, and it hasn't changed. And I don't necessarily want to change my life so much to cut that back because my bills keep going up with the rates. And uh, so anyway, she told me to take a look at what I can do. So I looked at uh, solar. Now solar has gotten better since it was in the past. It's more efficient. It's still a little pricey, uh, but I wanted to basically take a, a big, uh, you know, save big hole in my wallet. And the payback for what I want to do is going to take a little bit longer with solar. And this is what I'm looking at doing right now. Actually, I have a building permit. Um, I'm the only one in St. Mary's County that currently has a building permit in a critical area. And that's what Larry was talking about. A critical area in Annapolis has basically put a 90 day hold on people getting permits in a critical area. I'm, I'm the only one because I knew it was going to happen. Uh, this is a Jacobs 20 kilowatt system. It will put out uh, 20 kilowatts at about, uh, about 10 mile per hour average wind speed. We'll start putting that out. Uh, but anyway, I, I did some research, and like I said, I'm a double E. And go back here. I looked at solar, then I looked at wind, and the more I looked at wind, the better it looked. And uh, and after that, I, I was out at, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with, out west, we have a test range, China, China Lake, it's in the middle of the Mojave Desert. Uh, a friend of mine had a system I was looking at getting. It was, it's called the Jacobs 20 kilowatt system. And they come in three tower heights. It's either 80 foot, uh, 100 foot, or 120. And 
being an engineer, I don't trust anything until I see the numbers. And the guy out there in China Lake, actually, you usually put a weather system on your system, just so you can monitor how much wind you have per year, and also you can see the performance of your system. And actually, it, the numbers he was getting was actually matching what the manufacturer put out. Uh, but anyway, I'm just going to give you a quick brief on why I did. And like, and like Larry said, uh, originally when I approached uh, our zoning, I kind of knew what the answer was going to be. It was going to be no. Uh, when I first asked them, hey, I want to put wind turbine, it's a 120-foot tower, can I do this? Their first answer was, well, that's interesting. Let's put that in committee. Uh, and a week later, I got the answer I anticipated. It's like, nope, but if you give us another height, we'll see what we can do. Well, and they wanted me to read the, the local ordinance, which was on the internet. It's over 380 pages. And I wanted to cut to the chase, and I said, well, if you have a height in mind, just stop playing this game and just give me the height that you think I can put up. That didn't go very well. He said, uh, this individual said, give us $3,000 and we'll do a text ordinance and, and, and if you didn't like that, you can talk to our county commissioners. Well, he already told me at that point to jump the chain command. So I talked to the county commissioners, talked to Larry Jarbo and friends, and they were very helpful. They all supported me. Within a day, I got a call from this individual saying, um, hey, can I get a copy of that ordinance that you had uh, from New Jersey and we can take a look at? Other than that, Zoning has been very helpful and very supportive since then. We did have an ordinance. We started around, I guess, last year in April, and we actually had it signed off just before Christmas in December. So we do have an ordinance right now in St. Mary's County for wind technology. And I was part of that evolution, helping out technically, you know, what kind of high CD and all this other stuff. So it's a pretty good ordinance, and they all, almost all read the same. Uh, but right now, the max height we can do in St. Mary's County is about 150 feet total uh, height. And when they when they look at the total height of your system, it's the hub height as to where you can mount your blades and also the total length of your blades. Uh, my system is going to be, I'm going to use a 100 foot tower because that's what my wife wants. She doesn't want the bigger one. But it's a 100 foot tower. The blades are 15 feet tall, so my total length is 115 feet from base to the tip. But anyway, if you're going to do this, what you first need to do is like the previous briefer, you need to find how much power you're consuming. And that's what I did. I basically looked at all my Smeco bills and added them all up, and I'm consuming about 35,000 kilowatt hours a year. And that averages about 3,000 a month. Uh, so, and once you get that, you have to match the system, depending on what you want to do. Do you want to take most of your bill, or you want to do 50%, it's up to you, but I want to take a, a good chunk of it out and when I did the research, the, the Jacobs, uh, this company's been around since the 30s. And, and uh, they actually got bought out by WTIC up in, I think they're in Michigan or Minnesota, up in that area. Uh, but anyway, uh, the Jacobs system's been around since the 30s, and they're considered the Cadillac of systems. Now, there's other systems out there I looked at. There's a Burby, I'll be familiar with the Burbies. Uh, their max output is 10 kilowatt. And 10 kilowatt wasn't going to do it for me. It may do it for you, you can, again, you have to do this analysis. Uh, but the, the Jacobs, they actually go from 10 up to 20 kilowatt. And, uh, so anyway, once you do that, uh, here's a, a wind map of the local area. This is actually where the Isaac Walton, actually, they're interested in putting a turbine out here. Uh, you can go to the wind map through, I think, zone one, but if you go to uh, MEA, Maryland Energy Association, like they said in the previous one, they actually have a calculator. You can put in your, your local coordinates where you are, or even your zip code, your address, and they will give you what your, your average wind speed per year. And that's going to correlate how much power you're going to put out. Uh, with me, I'm actually, let me show you where I am. I'm in zone two. I'm about down here. And zone two is like, what, 9.8 to 11.5. Uh, so anyway, what does that mean to you or me? Uh, 